special. We're all celebrating the World Population Day, which is observed every 11th each year. And uh, we're yet to be having celebrations go through uh, in Uganda. That is zero if I'm having the right, uh, the right information. But as the national broadcaster, we intend to give you that information uh, shortly. And uh, we shall take you to those celebrations later on in the day. So keep watching. And uh, I have a brilliant woman, a superwoman, who is here to give us that particular information. Uh, this morning, I am joined by Jackie Katana. She's a founder and executive director of Facebook for Family Health, 3FH uh, Health Advocate. She'll be letting us know about herself and uh, what the organization does and how come they're taking part in this uh, celebration as uh, we look forward to the World Population Day. Lots and lots to discuss. More insight, you can be rest assured of that. Jackie, good morning. Good morning. Sandra. Good to have your company. Thank you. How have you been? I'm good. A working woman and in Uganda? Yes. <laughs> and mother? <laughs> yes. I believe there's a lot to balance right there. Yes. Just let the viewer get to know more about you, your organization, what you do and what you represent. It's me. I'm the founder and executive director of Faith for Family Health Initiative. It's an interfaith NGO with a mandate to improve uh, family health and well-being. I'm also an ardent reproductive health advocate uh, for over 20 years. Uh, in Uganda, I represent uh, the Reproductive Health Civil Society Organization at uh, the Health Bodies Advisory Committee of Minister of Health. And at Global Devo, I I'm an alternate representative uh, for Global Fund, uh, Global Financing Facility, Investors Group. Uh, investors Group is a group of all the donors that put resources in reproductive health through World Bank, the JFF mechanism. And we've been working with quite a number of actors to ensure that uh, women, uh, young girls, and children access health and well-being. Well, getting back to a um, topic of discussion, which is uh, the World Population Day, uh, where we cannot deny that uh, the population is growing itself yeah. continuously. Uh, there's a theme for today's celebration. Tell us more about the theme and the growing population. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, and we're very excited. Uh, as people who focus um, on advancing mm -hmm. the health and well-being of women, uh, children, young girls, as you said, but of course, working with men. <laughs> <laughs> we need them at the end yes, of the day. And, and we work with them for sure, but we are addressing where the need is more, and I'll be discussing what are those needs mm -hmm. that fo force us to ensure that we focus on interventions that address them. Uh, so the theme is about uh, prioritizing free education, mm -hmm. um, preventing school dropouts, and improving uh, household income. Surely, um, that's a theme for every Ugandan mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, who is commemorating uh, with us. And uh, it's linked also to the global, as you rightly say, the, the, the sustainable development goals, leaving nobody behind. Uh, we need everyone to make sure that we attain uh, better health outcomes, uh, better economic uh, aspects. So um, it's aligned to Uganda and beyond. And in the healthy sector, especially as well in the reproductive health and looking at population, um, Uganda, we are among the countries that have the first growing population. <laughs> we have a growth rate of 3 million um, per year. So every year, um, the wonderful mothers you're talking about, they give a 3 million. Of course, with the fathers <laughs> who are behind uh, the, the whole. But, but that three million is, is wonderful. It is a beautiful gift. But it comes with responsibilities. It comes with the needs, as we are going to discuss. Uh, so as we speak, uh, in Uganda, we are around 37 million. And maybe, who knows, by end of the year, we could even be 40 million. So in November last year, the world celebrated the 8 billion population mark. Mm -hmm. So we, we are proudly good contributors <laughs> <laughs> uh, of uh, the 8 billion, mm -hmm. um, which is a good thing. It really is, is, we can't say that a growing population is a bad, uh, a bad aspect. It comes with benefits mm -hmm. if they're harnessed well. <laughs> but it also comes with uh, challenges if, mm -hmm. if they are not consolidated. Uh, so Let's get back to Uganda. What kind of population do we have? Uh, what we call demographics. Um, over 80% of Ugandans are young people. And, and that's super. That means we have a productive, energetic mm -hmm. population. 
But unfortunately, 60% of those are not employed. <laughs> and that's why you see that the country and, and all the actors are saying we need to boost household incomes. We need to make sure that there's free education. So those who, who continue and complete education are able to earn, are able to be productive. It's not only actually education for um, the white corner jobs. Mm -hmm. It's even skinning. It's education that enables you to, to, to be creative, uh, to make sure that you have a better life. And, and, and stop school dropouts. And, and school dropouts is caused by a number of things. Uh, one of them is um, now that we have free education, but there's need to scale it up and ensure quality because we know that uh, with poor households, some drop out because they cannot get scholastic materials. So even when the government is saying, okay, let's scan up and make sure that the quality of education is good, if the households don't have enough income, they will still look at the government to come and provide. Um, look at the young girls. Most of them that are dropping out and really suffering from teenage pregnancy.